Now, when I talk about nihilism in this video, I am not talking about an aesthetic vaporwave nihilism that you may see in a meme page. A lot of that is just materialistic nominalism. However, what I'm talking about right now is something that, again, is me trying to refute some of the patterns of behavior that made my content not as good as it could have been in the past. Now, biologically, people say that you do not conceive of the death of others until you are five years old. And you do not conceive of the death of yourself until you're like maybe eight or nine. I have conceived both around four. And so, in many ways, nihilism was a struggle for me. The concept of melancholia. How do you continue on life knowing that it may very all, well all end, for you at least? That's been a struggle that I've dealt with a lot of times. Hold up. I'm putting this shit on too tight. Shit that is sounds like funny to me. Might be distorted too. So... I've dealt with this struggle for a very long time. Something that's psychologically been very difficult for me to talk about, especially to some maybe psychologists, psychiatrists who I used to talk to, guidance counselors when I was having trouble. Because some things were very easy for me to talk about, like, you know, my mom was a bitch in this time. It's difficult for me to connect with my classmates. Me struggling between being a selfish person and a selfless person at other times. And looking too much into the negatives. My obsession. But nihilism is something which, at these earlier ages, was very difficult for me to talk about. Because it's not something you usually... You need to be a little more adept and nuanced to think about these things. And I'm sure an adult wouldn't want to talk about these things. But when I think about the fact that a lot of us understand that at the peak of the civilization, we've made a lot of advancements to try and defeat nihilism. To try and essentially run away from that. To overcome it. But the thing with overcoming nihilism is that you're running away. It's like trying to run from the cops. Usually that doesn't go too well. You gotta bring the chase to your opposition sometimes. And in this case I truly believe that nihilism is something that must be You must bring the chase to it. You must, at the very least, rebuke it. You may not be able to refute it, but you can rebuke it. And that's something that I've learned recently, a couple of years ago, just one year ago, actually. And it's pretty damn interesting because... To me, the first step in understanding nihilism is understanding its Judaic roots, or its Semitic roots, its less advanced roots. Because I noticed wherever it's very prominent is wherever, like centuries ago, they were demographically very present. The 15th, 14th century in Italy, Germany around the 19th century. And I started to think about... Hold up. Homies is streaming. They can update videos too. So I started thinking about it, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I personally know a lot of Jews who are friends of mine, or 
have Jewish blood who they refute things from normies that they don't like because they're not normies with nihilism with reducing everything to you're just an insignificant speck of dust in a greater sea of dust and that's how they refute normies and boring normie culture and I'm thinking that's not weighty and this is the same nihilism that led people like Mitchell Heisman the guy who wrote Suicide Note to shoot himself in the head that dude is Jewish, so I'm thinking there definitely is a Jewish component to nihilism. And it's something that Abrahamically people try to fight with faith. But the aspects of it that you can use to fight nihilism are very Hellenic. Or, at the very least, not Hellenic, but a lot of Greek philosophy. A lot of looking past the flesh into an independent soul. And to me, knowing some of these things has made it so that I can look at this with a higher degree of confidence than I ever could have looked at it before. I'm trying to see if, okay, it is recording my voice. Because if this shit is mute, I'm going to be pissed as fuck. But learning all of this stuff is type interesting to me because I feel like I know a lot more about the world I live in and its history. And I can see how things have fallen apart as bad as they did. It's because... A lot of people in the civilization and even other parts of the world affected by these means are trying to run away from something they should not be running away from. They should be confronting, refuting, they should be taking steps to deal with it. And me personally, I gotta start with myself. A lot of my edgier rad trad videos had elements of nihilism that were contradictory to some of what I would have rather had as the main narrative. If your supporting evidence contradicts the main narrative, it's not good supporting evidence. And I see that. I've said a lot of things about Nietzsche, but one of the things that he wanted to stop nihilism, but his method of doing so, like I remember seeing some stuff he wrote about Wagner, that composer, talking about how he didn't like how Wagner's style is so dark, that German music and things which epitomize the German soul shouldn't be dark. That's the Catholic Church, Roman Catholic Church. And he thinks that's nihilistic in a way. I'm thinking, and so I wonder, aside from this guy's health problems, that he's going crazy, it's because he's part of that cheese too, man. And that's why, even though he says some things that are right, it's his solutions that he offers that can be very problematic. And I do believe that even within the Christian faith, there are ways of suppressing that nihilism that are good. But still, you gotta like uh, stop falling for traps when you try to stop things from being set in motion. This is boy, Mr. Wonka 7, and suck my dick.